Three races, three different winners on the water, three points separating the top three teams. Those are the bullet points from the sharp end of the leaderboard in ORCD, and they all portend a great week of racing in the largest class of handicap yachts at 13th edition of Race Week at Newport, presented by Rolex. Well, there were some pretty significant shifts uh, on a number of the beats, and uh, we were on the right side of a couple of them and able to get in position for a few others. It's a deep fleet and there's a lot of, a lot of great teams here, so we'll have our tough moments too, no doubt. And just being able to grind through those, I think, is going to be the key to success over a long four-day run. This is the Weekly Sailing World on Water, July 22, 2022. Despite finishing third in the final race, SSL Team Malaysia joined runaway group leaders SSL Team South Africa at the final series in Bahrain this October. Today is the golden day of the fifth qualifying series, with one race planned for both groups and each race counting double in points. Ukraine and Singapore had a good start. After a close battle upwind, Thailand led, arriving first at the weather mark, followed by Ukraine. Ukraine almost caught up to Thailand on the downwind. Thailand managed to arrive first at the gate, followed closely by Ukraine. Singapore and South Korea followed and rounded the gate simultaneously. Singapore, in a desperate attempt to take the lead of the race, tried an all-or-nothing move by going fully to the right during the second upwind beat. Unfortunately, the wind shifted left and they lost even more ground. Thailand still leading, followed by Ukraine before the last downwind. Thailand won the last race of the series, ahead of Ukraine and South Korea. Singapore finished last. The overall results stayed the same as the previous day, as Ukraine won the event with 23 points. Thailand also got 23 points, but had less race victories than Ukraine, and therefore placed second. Singapore stayed in third position ahead of South Korea. I'm super excited to go in Bahrain. We are, I'm super happy that we did it for our country, especially during this period. So I, I was not sailing and whole team was not only sailing by us, but we was also representing all our nation and all our friends. Race 6 saw a clean start with South Africa taking the lead. South Africa arrived first at the weather mark, followed by India and Malaysia. South Africa had a blazing downwind run, setting the fastest boat speed of the week at 15.2 knots and rounded the leeward gate in first. India tried a bold last minute windward drop and jibe. The maneuver didn't work out as they planned. The Jenniker fell into the water. They overshot the gate and stopped the boat. 
This opened the door for Malaysia to come back into the game. However, Malaysia too had problems making a clean mark rounding and India managed to keep their second position. South Africa furthered their lead. Winning the day, the series, and the fifth bullet of the week. India arrived second and Malaysia third. Overall, South Africa won the event with 19 points and a ticket to Bahrain. Malaysia, even though they finished third today, kept their second place overall and got the second ticket to Bahrain. India finished third, only one point behind Malaysia. You know, the concept of Ubuntu means that you do something for the collective and this SSL is really a Ubuntu concept and what a fantastic opportunity to sell against all these countries. And it was really emotional to see Ukraine on the podium there and uh, really hard to think they got, got to go back to a war you know and that's uh, something more than we have to to deal with you know so be sure to join us and watch the 40 teams competing live in the final series from Bahrain starting on the 29th of October to the 20th of November With a project as highly contingent on weather and conditions as the Emirates team New Zealand wind-powered land speed world record attempt, constant evaluation and adjustments of plans are essential to the success of the overall objective. Today we had a chance to have a catch up as a group on the land speed project. Normally like the end of the whole, the whole year is perfectly dry. There's no water in the lake. It's very, very abnormal for it to have water in the lake at all. As you've probably seen that photo that I sent through, we're down to about sort of 50 to 70 millimetres now um, out in the middle of the lake. So Clouds was optimistic. We should see 100 millimetres of evaporation in the next four weeks. So we may not actually end up being too far behind where we originally set our, our goals, Sean. So I think, you know, we've got to keep sort of marching ahead. So you, you don't think we need to consider a plan B or a different venue or anything like that at this stage? I think we would talk about that, too. But if we got to November, for example, and hadn't been able to run or hadn't broken the record, for example, then we would possibly look at the future options. But um, I think up until that point, Lake Eden is still by far the, the, the best option for us. It sounds like Plan B might be more a timing thing as opposed to a venue yeah. change. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah, right. Really around September and October is actually the windiest part of the, the year in that area. We just need to make sure we're ready to roll, um, you know, when, when the lake does dry out, basically, so we're, you know, straight into it. Nice. Okay, mate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, mate. We're in the starting blocks, but right now there's a delay, and all we can do is be prepared. And the two or three weeks we had here in Auckland uh, testing at Penelope were huge, because when we start out in Australia, we'll be able to push go very quickly. Clearly the, the weather has the, been the main factor here, so, but we also need the weather to play its part once we get there because sweet spots plus 25 knots, these fronts can come through and we might only get one or two hours and we might only get half an hour where we've actually got the, the ultimate conditions to actually really have a crack at this record. It all came down to this day. With up to three races across the 10 classes, no lead was completely safe. The IC37 class, with 24 boats, was the extreme example, but new wave sailed to the wind.
perfect conditions. Very, very fortunate to have a fantastic group of people. We sailed um, you know, very consistently. It's, it's a team and, and the whole team did a fantastic job. And we, we tacked and crossed and I bet there was uh, probably five or six boats that we were crossing by five to 10 feet of any one of those. If we couldn't get across any one of those, right, it would have, uh, that last race would have ended a little differently. The competition was absolutely fabulous. There were any number of boats that could have won this class. Uh, we had to work really, really hard and we're nervous till the very last race to see if we could hold our lead. So the light conditions this week was a real challenge for us, but I've got great trimmers and, and a great crew and they kept the boat moving as fast as we possibly could the whole week. The K-Challenge Team France was the dominant force for the first half of this GC32 World Championship, held in Lagos, Portugal, but for the second half it was Christian Zuera's Black Star Sailing Team, which overtook the French after the third of four races. It was not an easy day. In the morning we were um, six points behind K-Challenge. We get out on the water to race our own race. I think we managed today the best we can do. I feel happy. I feel thankful for Marina de Lagos, Sopromar, and all the guys, the race committee, who made it possible that we can race here in Lagos again. For centuries, Portugal is very much engaged to the sea, and so we are very proud to have the right infrastructure here in Lagos with the right partners. For the past 18 months, Team Malaysia has been building its new Amoka race yacht, Malaysia Sea Explorer. On the 19th of July, after 80,000 work hours, the team is finally ready to roll her out of the hangar and let her touch the water for the first time. You follow your dream and one day it, it can happen, it can. We are in front of a multi plus the boat yard that's building our new Emoka. Is we have deadline with the race plus the fact that we are on a new generation of uh, Imoka boat. The biggest challenge on this project it will be the timeline and to make sure that uh, we follow the planning. We just received the mould of the deck from Germany for the Schulz company. It's very nice, most wonderful mould I've seen. I love this. The time pressure until then will build constantly and we need to be vigilant to push as much as we can to make sure we will deliver on time.
Last week we featured the launch of the Paprec Arkea Fast 40 yacht. This week she started her first race in the Dream Cup 2022. The Dream Cup, a Grand Prix de France de course AU large, was created in 2016 by Jacques Civilize to meet the need for a major open French offshore sailing race in the summer, open to many types of single and multi-hull boats, professional and amateur sailors. Paris, 14h20, uh, I'm very well placed on the line. A few long hours to not grill. And it's a part of the ball, I'm on the good side. As it's easy, it's not on a board for the first bouée. I'm going to in the top 3. Et euh, là, on attaque la manœuvre pour envoyer le spi. Et, euh, et voilà, et dès que, dès que c'est envoyé, après une bonne suée, euh, un gros effort pour envoyer le spi en tête, enlever la chaussette, le régler, euh, régler tout le bateau, regarder où on va, enfin se poser, et puis euh, préparer la suite, euh, enrouler de la bouée d'Urville un petit peu plus loin, et puis euh, et ensuite euh, un affalage à la bouée d'Urville euh, un peu technique, puisqu'on descend le spi pour euh, envoyer le Genac. Et, et déployer le Genac et partir vers l'Angleterre. The sailing club of Garda Trentino, especially in the summer period, also make themselves available for classes and events, which exclusively involve foreign crews, as they are reserved for classes that are not widespread in Italy. This is what is happening at the Mark IV European Championship of the acrobatic 18-footers from Australia, who are putting on a great show at Circular Vila Arco. Almost 100 of the most accomplished riders representing over 20 countries from five continents are ready to compete in the Kitefoil World Series Gazeria in the south of Italy over the next four days from 21 to the 24th of July. We are here for the Act 2 of uh, the Kite for World Series 2022 in Gizaria. We have uh, such a good forecast for the event. Uh, the sun is here, we have a lot of wind. Uh, we are looking for uh, really good tight racing with all of the top guys. The overall speed is really high this uh, year and uh, yeah, it's going to be really tough. We are here in Jitseria for the second stop of the 2022 Kiteful World Series. It's one of my favorite venues of the tour, so I'm very excited to be here. I started kite foiling internationally and competing internationally back in 2015. Um, and since I won my first world championship in 2016, I won every single regatta after that up until Lake Tronze, which was the last stop of the Kiteful World Series and it was 32 consecutive international regattas, which is quite a lot. 
Um, but yeah, now the sport is just getting so much more competitive and the margins are closer and um, the racing is much tighter, which is very exciting and it's great for the sport and um, really pushes me to become just a better athlete. But now it's just a different game and I really hope that I can come back to this event with a little bit better speed and um, just better overall. And I'm very much looking forward to getting, getting back to my original winning ways. <laughs>